Hey guys, this is HD. Welcome back. This is going to be an HD broadcast, the Daily Ladder Show, and it is currently Tuesday. Um, so I did miss the Monday Daily, but I'm going to be doing two today, hopefully. So uh, mix up for Monday and Tuesday. And I just want to thank you guys all for uh, staying tuned. And of course, uh, Merry Christmas to everybody. And of course, Happy New Year's coming up in a couple of days. So hopefully you guys all stay safe, have a good New Year's resolution, and uh, don't party or drink too much. Want to see you guys all around for New Year's 2011. So anyways, this is going to be my Protoss game. This is going to be on Zelnaga Caverns. And I actually had Dopa, as you guys all know, uh, Donald. He's my good friend. He's a very good Protoss player. If you guys saw the Christmas special, I played a very long and epic game against him. He was actually over at my house and he gave me a little bit of uh, coaching tips while I was playing Protoss. So uh, I'm going to be dropping some of the knowledge that he dropped on me back to you guys. And hopefully this helps all of you guys out there who are Protoss players. And uh, I, this is actually a Protoss versus Terran. So if you are Protoss or Terran, hopefully you take away something from this game. So this is, once again, on Zelnaga Caverns. I am the Protoss down here in the bottom left. And uh, the very first thing I'm, I'm doing, as you guys can see, moving out my scouting probe as soon as the pylon is down. I really want to just get that probe out there, find out exactly what your opponent is up to. And uh, it's basically just like Zerg or Terran. Whenever you, you uh, play the game early on, you want to get your scouting worker in there, find out what they're doing, and you want to react accordingly. You want to be able to adjust your build and uh, play exactly how you want to play, but of course adapt to what your opponent's doing. Now, it looks like this Terran player um, is not going to be walling in his front door. Now, this is really kind of a preference thing for Terran players. They can, they can choose to wall in or not. Um, and oftentimes, if a Terran doesn't wall in, you can actually be very aggressive. You can either Chrono out an early Zealot, um, and of course, for all you guys who don't know what Chrono is, it's just simply Chrono Boost from the Nexus, speeds up your buildings. Uh, so you can speed up a Zealot, get it inside the enemy base, and do some harass when all he's got is a handful of Marines, maybe two or three at best. You can also be aggressive with early Stalkers. And this game, I'm actually going to be aggressive and open up with two Stalkers. As soon as I saw that his front door was not blocked off, I realized that I could either get an early Zealot in, or I could bring in a couple of early Stalkers. So my strategy here is to be aggressive in the early game, and kind of dictate the pace of the game to my opponent. I don't want to sit back and be too complacent and just play my builds out. As uh, that's really how Zerg plays, but as Protoss, sometimes you want to be aggressive and you want to take the game to your opponent's face. You want to tell him that you're not scared to get in there and mix things up and be aggressive. So as you guys can see, I do have my second gateway on the way, and I am going to start saving Chrono Boost now. So my Nexus has a ton of energy saved up, and right when your second gateway finishes, your Cyber Core should finish around the same time, and you should have enough to Chrono Boost two Stalkers out, and notice my Rally Points already set to my opponent's base. Now, uh, he does have a good scout in. He did see what I'm doing, so his SCV pretty much saw my double gate opening and the cyber core. He did, and uh, a scout can see the energy on the Nexus. So presumably, he knows that stalkers are coming. He knows about this early aggression, um, unless he, he, his scouting sense isn't on par. Unless he doesn't realize that oh, there's energy saved on the Nexus and there's a second gateway coming up. So we'll see if he's able to react to this. Once again, coming in there. Uh, with the SCV. Uh, unfortunately, I just don't have any units to deal with that early on. And here comes the two Stalkers. So we'll see how much damage these two Stalkers are going to be able to do. And of course, I'm going to be able to get two more Chrono Boosting those out as well. So it is going to be constant aggression. You want to keep the flow of aggression on. And eventually, when you feel like you've done enough damage or when you've pressured your opponent enough, that's when you want to go for your Expo or start to transition into a different strategy. So my opponent still has his SCVs in my base, but he knows now about the Stalkers. He did indeed throw up a bunker, so he knew about this early aggression. But if you've got two Stalkers and all he has are Marines inside the bunker, feel free to walk inside. Get a full scout off of your opponent's base. And of course, all, this, all the meanwhile, getting a good micro on, moving your damaged Stalkers away. Unfortunately, I moved them in a bunch of SCVs, so that got taken out. But for two Stalkers, think about it. I killed a couple of Marines. I got a full scout into the opponent's base. So I see that he is not going for Banshees, which is a very, very uh, deadly opening versus Protoss. Protoss needs to know if Terran is going for Cloak Banshees early on, because if they are, then you need to get Robotics Facility. But I scouted he had a Command Center. So I knew he was going to go for an Expo build. And in order to counter that, I'm going to go ahead and go for my own Nexus now. I know he's not going to be aggressive, he's playing defensive, so now's a good time to just get my own Nexus, 
And at the same time, keep a contain on my opponent's base. Don't let him land his command center. So I'm going to try to get the upper edge now with a contain and with an early expansion. Now, notice that uh, his bunker does have Marauders inside, so I can't walk up the ramp anymore. Anytime you see a rocket shell from Marauders shoot out of the bunker, you cannot walk up with Stalkers. That's just suiciding your Stalkers up there. But what you can do is throw up proxy pylons, get a contain. Like I said, contain that com uh, command center from landing down. And eventually, you do want to get um, just continue to pump units, get a third gateway up. Warp Gate should finish around this time, and then you can start to warp in more units and keep that contain going. As you guys can see, getting a pylon now at his natural and continuing to pump out units. Do remember though that uh, as a, of course I'm not a Protoss player, so everything I say hopefully you guys take with a grain of salt as I mostly play Zerg, but this is really the strategy that Dopo is telling me to do, and it seems to work out quite well. Now it looks like my opponent is going to be pushing out. He's trying to land his command center, but of course my units here are containing him. And the most important unit to get here is the sentry. Um, notice you can use the force field and what you want to do is cut the opponent's forces. Almost every time a Terran goes for early command center, they're going to go for bio. They're going to go for two racks expo and then they're going to transition into four barracks. And their strategy here is to use bio. So when they try to run down the ramp, you have to pay attention and you have to be able to cut those forces in half so you can deal with half of the army in the front and leave the other half in the back. So you do need around four sentries and you have to pay attention to the minimap. You have to see when he starts to push out because if you allow him to push out, then you're going to lose your contain, you're going to let him get your expo, and that's when you're going to be in a little bit of trouble. But remember that the entire time that you have your... Right now, I have my Nexus, my opponent's contained, I'm getting way ahead of my opponent because I've got so much more economy, it's starting to rack up, and really the longer I hold on to this contain, the further ahead I get and the likelier, uh, the, the more likely my chance of, of winning this entire game becomes. So as you guys can see, getting my economy back up at home, I do have a robotics facility. And the first unit you usually want to get out of Robo is an Observer. Uh, I, was, I clicked the Immortal there, but I decided to cancel, get the OBS out, and really find out what, find out what my opponent is doing. Um, obviously, I can't run my units up because of that bunker. So I can get a nice cloaked OBS in there and use that unit. You know, a lot of times players don't use Observers. It's a very good unit against Terrans. Find out what they're doing. So here we go, cutting the army in half once again, dealing with the frontal half. Um, you actually can cut the ramp off. You can, you can use only one force field. So I did actually get a little bit over aggressive with the force fields. You usually want to try to uh, get the force field in the right position and you can cut off an entire army half and half. So try to practice that if you're a Protoss player, practice your sentry micro and only use one force field to cut the ramp. You don't need to waste energy for two. So as you guys can see, my OBS is out right now, and I am getting pylons on the side of the map. The reason why I'm getting pylons on the side is because when a Terran is contained like this, there's only a couple of things he can do to win the game. Either A, he tries to bust out and hope that you're not paying attention with your force fields, or B, he tries to use drops. Uh, and he can use drops to basically drop into your base and then eventually push out by forcing your army back to defend. Now it looks like my opponent was able to push out, unfortunately I didn't pay attention to him when he stimmed and ran down the ramp, and warping in Zealots here was actually a bad idea, because really these Zealots aren't going to be able to do much, I pretty much lost the, the contain in the battle, so uh, really at that point, not even uh, there's no point to even running the Zealots away, you might as well just uh, get him in there, try to do as much damage as you can, but really the contain is lost. So. Really, uh, you might think, oh, now I'm really far behind because my contain is broken. Now my opponent can get his natural. He can even attack with his army. But you have to remember that I kept him back for such a long time. I got, I had my Nexus running for so much longer. Chances are that my supply tabs are probably about even with my opponent. And I can easily macro up a massive army once again. So it's really the Terran player right now who is behind. Uh, he's going to have to play some catch up by getting his economy rolling and of course trying to go for dropships. And as you guys can see, he does have two drop, two starports inside his base. So he is going to eventually get some dropship play out. But with my pylons around the side of the map, I should be able to see when my opponent decides to be crafty, when he decides to move out with marines and marauders, and I'll be able to pick off those dropships as long as I'm paying attention to the minimap. 
Now, I am going for the gold expansion, and as you guys can see, in base, getting Colossus tech out. Um, you want to be a little bit careful with how many Colossus you get, though, because if you see with your Observer that your opponent has two Starports, then the likelihood of him pumping a ton of Vikings is obviously very, very high. So you don't want to... You don't want to just cut Colossus completely. You do want to get a couple. It's nice to have one or two because you, you'll get that nice army mixture and composition. And you may force your opponent to overcompensate and build too many Vikings. So you do want to get a couple. But uh, you don't want to overdo it because he has so many starports. Now it looks like my opponent finally is going to start to push out. And obviously I can warp in a ton of units with my warp gates. Get my, mix, my mixture of units out. And I should be able to deal with the attack when it decides to come. And obviously, I have a very big advantage right now. I have the gold expansion. I've had the natural for a much longer time. Army tabs should be somewhat even. And of course, with my observer, I can see when the dropships start to move out, along with the assistance of the pylons on the side of the map. Note on the minimap, I have a pylon at the 9, and I have a pylon at the 3. So there you guys actually see a dropship is coming in. Now, uh, I actually see this right now as I'm casting, but when I was playing the game, I didn't notice that pylon. But if you are a very, very good Protoss player, and you, you can see now how the pros use those pylons, and they can see when the dropship's coming in. So they would have been able to intercept this dropship a long, long time ago. Unfortunately for me, I didn't see it coming, but I am going to be able to mobilize my forces. And notice that I'm not bringing my entire army back. A lot of er uh, a lot of new players make the mistake of bringing their entire army back to deal with a small mediocre drop. When you do that, you actually leave your gold expansion exposed and you allow your opponent a window to get back into this game. So you just want to pull back a few units, show your opponent that you're going to take out that drop, but you're still leaving the core majority of your forces at your front door. You're not going to allow him to push forward and stim and take out that nexus. You want to keep. You want to hold on to all your expansions, and that really just goes for all 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 races: Zerg, Protoss, and Terran. If you're dealing with the drop, don't pull your whole army back. So here we go. It looks like my opponent finally going to push out. He has a pretty nice army mixture. It's going to come down to force fields, and obviously you want to split that army in half. This is something that Huck does very very well and it's a key to his success as Protoss. You want to cut the enemy Terran bio ball in half and then if you're in this kind of uh, engagement warp in zealots in the front of your army and then once you do another cut as you guys can see there now you can start to warp in different units. You can warp in stalkers, you can warp in sentries if you need more but uh, the important thing there that I, that I hope you guys take away is learning how to cut with your force fields, dealing with the army and knowing what units to warp in from your warp gates. Um, Protoss play, a lot of it comes down to knowing what to warp in. If if you're going to cut your army in half, uh, cut the opponent's army in half, then you're going to want to warp in zealots in the front. But if all the forces of your opponent's already taken out, then you want to actually warp in stalkers. So it's a very, very complex strategy. And, and playing Protoss, a lot of it is kind of coming down to, to knowing what units to build and executing your build orders correctly. So it looks like I was able to take out my opponent's army with relative ease. He, he did have a very large bio ball, and if I didn't land my force fields correctly, then that could have gone the other way. My opponent could have easily taken out my army. But uh, with my nice army mixture, a couple of Colossus here, good force fields, and of course warping in units when necessary, I was able to take out that army, and I should be able to do an easy push here and take out my opponent. As you guys can see, not much. Uh, obviously, Terrans take a much longer time to rebuild. And I'm laying down uh, force fields at the ramp to prevent any reinforcement, reinforcements from stimming and running down. So this should be a pretty easy GG from here on out. Um, I actually laid down two force fields at these ramps. You actually, like I said, only want to lay down one. But it doesn't really matter. My opponent leaves the game. And that is going to be a quick GG. So that's a Protoss versus Terran game. And uh, I'll have more ladder games coming out in the near future. Hopefully you guys uh, stay tuned. I think the next one will either be a TBZ or PVZ or possibly a Zerg versus something. So hopefully you guys stay tuned. I hope uh, all of you guys who are Protoss or Terran hopefully took away something from this video. And uh, have a safe, happy New Year's. HD, signing out.